It turns out that battery EVs are a brilliant option for businesses, and we are constantly being bombarded with questions about this. So here's a recap of a recent episode on company cars, salary sacrifice, and how EVs make employees happier and more productive too. All ahead of our B2B EV day at Farnborough International on the 10th of October, when your business can exclusively access hundreds of the best EVs, take test drives and listen and talk to the experts too. It's free to attend thanks to our friends at Octopus Electric Vehicles and the ticket link is in the description box beneath this episode. The appeal of accessing top-tier cars at reasonable and flexible monthly payments has meant that leasing cars rather than owning them has gained huge popularity in recent years. And in fact, today, around 20 to 30% of drivers opt to lease their vehicles. And that becomes even more compelling when you start to hear about salary sacrifice schemes in which you pay for that monthly lease pre-tax. And it becomes even more appealing for electric vehicles when you find out that the benefit in kind tax rate is so much lower for EVs than it is for petrol or diesel cars. But mention the word tax and that's where some people, including myself, start to get a little bit lost. So we've come here to Octopus Electric Vehicles to find out a little more. Salary sacrifice is an amazing way for people to get an electric car. It's an employee benefit that employers, businesses can offer to their team members and then the team members can pay on a monthly basis out of their gross salary before income tax and national insurance. There's a small amount of benefit in kind tax to pay, often known as company car tax, but it is totally overshadowed by the huge savings that can be made on a monthly basis, which means that every month your electric car can be a lot cheaper than the equivalent petrol or diesel car. How does the benefit in kind rate differ for EVs versus, say, petrol or diesel cars? Do you know, it's amazing. The government has really given this huge benefit to electric cars and currently the uh, benefit in kind rate for EVs is just 2% compared to sometimes like well over 10, even 20% for the petrol diesel equivalents. It is increasing over the next few years, so it will increase 1% every year through to 2028, so by that point it will be 5%, but even then it's still much lower than the other equivalents. And in terms of what Octopus Electric Vehicles offers, what's included in that monthly payment? So we like to make it as easy as possible for you. And in addition to that, all of this is coming out of your gross tax. So we've included as much as we can. So you get the use of the car, you get insurance. In fact, we can install a charge point at your house. We can give you a really cheap energy tariff so that you can charge up your car overnight at a fraction of the cost. We even include 4,000 free miles in that. And actually, if you don't have a driveway, we also give you access to the public charging network, Electroverse, and we can give you 4,000 free miles on that instead. Also, if anything goes wrong, we've got breakdown cover included, servicing, maintenance, repair, and tire replacement too. And in terms of the potential savings, so if we were to take um, an electric vehicle offered via um, Octopus Electric Vehicles, an electric vehicle offered via a traditional leasing scheme, on average, what kind of savings are customers experiencing? So, you know, a typical saving on tax might be, say, two to four hundred pounds a month even. And of course, that includes everything. So sometimes what happens is people see the price and they, they actually think initially it might look expensive. But what you forget is it includes insurance, it includes servicing and maintenance, it includes tyres and even free electricity included in that as well. So there's so much bundled in. So people are saving on all of those different items, which really, really mounts up. It's also really worth saying that uh, our customers are accessing these really low cost tariffs. So in terms of whether they've got it leased through us or whether they've got it leased through a different way or bought their EV in a different way, if you can access a low cost energy tariff at say 7p per kilowatt hour overnight, you could be saving £100 a month for a typical UK driver versus your petrol costs. So actually there's already a huge saving there. So let's say, I don't know, you might be on a lease with us for out of your net salary, three, four hundred pounds, but you're also saving another hundred pounds on your fuel. So it's really worth taking that into account when you're considering these as options versus other options. So you need to see that whole holistic piece to really understand yeah. that actually there are so many components to this which become increasingly compelling. Yeah, in fact, Imogen, I've got a question for you, <laughs> one for you to ponder. We as an industry talk about total cost of ownership a lot, right? So if you add in the cost of the car, in fact, often EVs have lower servicing costs because there's not as much to service, there's many fewer moving parts, and the running costs can be really low. 
So we talk about this total cost of ownership and we're like, if only people can realise how much cheaper it is to have this total cost of ownership for an EV versus an, what we call an ICE car, a petrol car or a diesel car, you know, they would be so excited. I think we need to rebrand it, right? It's like total cost of ownership. I'm a nerd. I'm happy to be a nerd. But not everyone really resonates with such, such terminology. So I'm really looking for uh, new branding options for total cost of ownership. The owner is absolutely right. Total cost of ownership, or TCO, is not a particularly sexy term and not that intuitive to understand either. So we would love your suggestions for its much needed rebrand. But we need a term that for electric vehicles captures the lower maintenance and lower fuel, or rather electricity costs. And when it comes to EVs via salary sacrifice, also the lower tax rate and the lower total amount of tax you're paying on your take-home salary. And perhaps we even need to future-proof the term to capture the benefits of vehicle-to-grid when EVs can power your home and balance the grid. No mean feat. Pop your thoughts in the comments. But if you do have salary sacrifice available at work, when it comes to actually picking your specific EV, where do you start? I think a lot of people do a huge amount of research online is what we find. So obviously everything electric, the fully charged show, give great profiles of the vehicles and, and reviews of them. So we find that people do do a lot of research that way and really like to investigate themselves. Some people do like to go and test drive. Often people might know others as well. And it's really catching. So when you find that somebody's made the switch to EVs, they really like it. And they talk to their friends about it. We, we uh, make the analogy to these people probably were the first people with smartphones, smartwatches, and now they're turning up with their electric car and they're talking to friends and family at barbecues, at dinner parties about that. And so people are learning from their trusted friends as well. So what happens to the cars at the end of their lease and how is that impacting the second-hand car market? So the second-hand car market is absolutely taking off and there's some really affordable bargains. There's a couple of things going on. One is for us, if the car comes back, sometimes we can release it out for another driver to be able to take it through salary sacrifice or through a different lease. Or we might put it through other channels for remarketing, that's what it's called. And so we might um, send it to a dealer or an auction to be able to sell that car. Uh, I mean, second-hand market just taking off is such a fantastic thing for all, all drivers. It's providing this whole new market of affordable EVs. Uh, so that's been brilliant on salary sacrifice, but also just generally it's brought the cost down significantly. Just by having supply of them available, people can get their hands on them and, and really driving for much lower cost. Now, if you do have an EV salary sacrifice scheme available to you and you don't know which electric vehicle to go for, then do come along to one of our live shows. All of the information is in the description box below. But one of the things that's really amazing about them is that you can test drive loads and loads of different types of electric vehicles back to back, compare them against each other and speak to all of the experts. Now, really interestingly, EV leases, both via salary sacrifice schemes and other types of leases, are really driving the second-hand EV market. And in fact, used EV sales jumped 52.6% in Q2 2024, with used EVs aged between three and five years having the fastest rate of sales. And even better than that, those second-hand EVs have price parity with their petrol and diesel equivalents, really ensuring that EVs are accessible to more and more people. But with benefit in kind tax rates set to increase, how do we ensure that the salary sacrifice scheme continues to drive EV adoption for more people? Often when you hear around about um, salary sacrifice and benefit in kind schemes, often the first comment that we receive on the Everything Electric show is, yes, but they're only reserved for high income earners. Is that true? How does it become more accessible to more people? Well, do you know what? This has made it more accessible already. What we've seen is that a few years ago, you know, typically electric cars were really expensive. We, uh, I started doing this in 2017. At that point, there were five cars that could go over 100 miles. There was like the BMW i3, the Nissan Leaf, the Renault Zoe, and two really expensive Teslas. And the first three cars were great cars, but sometimes a bit like Marmite. And the, the Teslas were really aspirational, but really expensive. Since then, there's been this explosion of many other cars. So there were still other really expensive cars, also on salary sacrifice made more, more affordable, but we've seen many more affordable cars coming out, again, more affordable on salary sacrifice. So there's this kind of opening up of EVs for everyone. And then in addition, now we're opening up these second-hand cars too. So it's just getting more accessible all the time. It's just getting really exciting. 
If someone is interested to opt for a salary sacrifice electric vehicles and their employer currently doesn't offer it, what do you suggest they do? Well, they should definitely speak to their employer. We have information on our website that they can download and share as well. We would also be delighted to help them on that conversation, of course. Um, but absolutely, their, their employer is such a great benefit. So it's uh, zero cost for their employer to implement it. So this is basically one of the greatest ways for the employer to reduce their carbon emissions across their employee base. So there's, there's benefits from a carbon perspective, but also it's financially so valuable to those employees and it shows that they're really committed to the environment. So employees really want to, we found, and in fact in research it's shown, they really want to feel like they're doing things for the planet in their day-to-day -day job and they can make impact. So this enables them to do it as well as a local uh, impact for the local roads by reducing emissions in their areas. So, so many benefits. It can improve uh, hiring, it can improve retention of great staff. So all of these benefits, um, we've got a lot of research on it, we'd be delighted to help any of your watchers uh, if they would like to have that conversation at work. And if an employer was to offer workplace charging, are there schemes available via Octopus um, in the whole sort of Octopus ecosystem that can make that really compelling as well? Yeah, so we we actually have partners that we work with to make sure that we get great uh, work, workplace charging options. We find that really helps encourage people to take it up, particularly if you want to make sure it's equitable. So some people might have driveways, some people might not. But actually, if they can come and charge at work when the car's parked, it can really lower the cost of charging again for those drivers. So we find that that really helps the uptake. It's so interesting that when you look at this, it's not just about what you pay for the car, but the overall ecosystem, how much you're paying for insurance and for electricity and where that electricity is coming from. And that's where things get so interesting. But Fiona's right, we need a new term for total cost of ownership. So let us know what you think it should be in the comments. But that's it. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Our three free YouTube channels on EVs and clean tech are funded by our fun packed test drive tastic events in Farnborough, London, the Southwest, the North, Melbourne, and Sydney, and next up, Everything Electric Farnborough. And new for UK viewers, you can now buy a battery EV and much more at everythingelectric.store.